Welcome to Yahoo Finance Vision. I'm Lindsay Arendt. There's a new energy company in the works that you've probably never heard of, and if you had, you probably wouldn't believe it. It's called Space Energy Access Systems, and it's a company whose main goal is to revolutionize the way that we create and consume energy on a global scale. However, it gets a bit more complicated when you factor in where the company claims to derive its technology from. We're going to give you a hint. It's not made on planet Earth. Joining us now to discuss one theory for the future of alternative energy is Dr. Stephen Greer, CEO of Space Energy Access Systems and head of the Disclosure Project. Dr. Greer, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Sure. Let's talk about the company first. This company essentially seeks to change energy as we know it. That's a pretty lofty goal. How do you propose to do so? Well, you have to back this up with a little discussion. My uncle designed the uh, lunar module, and as a young child, I learned about a lot of classified projects in the aerospace area that uh, were dealing with high-energy physics uh, and technologies that, quite frankly, would uh, enable us to replace uh, fossil fuels uh, very robustly with an entirely new type of physics and energy system. And, uh, in fact, these things have been around since the 40s and 50s and have been suppressed or, or highly classified. What our intent is, is to uh, develop the, these technologies and begin to move them out to the public in the next 18 months or so so that we could get uh, energy independence from imported oil and also greatly benefit the environment. I think that what people have to understand is that if you study the entire quantum physics and post-quantum physics world, it's pretty well known that there's a baseline energy field that's been termed a zero-point energy field from which all of the matter and all of energy uh, is fluxing in and out in sort of a virtual state. And that this energy field is huge. I mean, it's a massive, uh, they estimate that every cubic centimeter of, of space around us has enough energy to run the world for a day. And what this means is that if you can tap into this field of energy, and you can, that you can derive from the electromagnetic flux field, as it's called, enough energy to run your house or your car or a manufacturing plant without burning combustible fuels. Uh, and without creating any pollution in the process. Okay. Let me quickly let our viewers know we are taking your questions. This is a rather unconventional interview for Finance Vision. Uh, we're going to uh, take questions for Dr. Stephen Greer. Click the Ask a Question button if you have any questions. Dr. Greer, I want to back up and let our viewers know a little bit of background about you and what you do. You are the head of the Disclosure Project, which is essentially a campaign to expose what you think are the government's uh, supposed ties to extraterrestrials and UFO sightings. Um, it's interesting because today the news broke of a shadow government. I'm sure that kind of ties in well in a way with what you're trying to expose, that is the government's uh, cover-up of knowledge of UFOs and extraterrestrials. I want to know how you're relating your company, Space Access Energy Systems, to all of this, and if you could be successful in changing the way we uh, use and consume energy, would you be able to make money off of the venture? Well, sure. Of course, the Disclosure Project is a nonprofit entity. In a sense, uh, Space Energy Access Systems is a spinoff, um, uh, much as the Rocky Mountain Institute had many energy company spinoffs. And I think that what uh, our focus is, to get back to what the Disclosure Project is doing, which people can see that at disclosureproject.org, is that we've identified over 400 people who have been inside these top-secret government military projects uh, who know that they have been illegally suppressing this kind of information, and they are beginning to come forward. We've already interviewed on digital videotape over 100 of these top secret witnesses, and in fact, last May had uh, the largest press conference uh, at the National Press Club in 20 years, uh, attended by the world's media discussing this. Our intention with that project, with the Disclosure Project, is to establish the fact that, in fact, there is sort of a shadowy government bureaucracy that operates. And it, when, in 1993, when I first bre briefed the Clinton administration on this, and when I, I personally spent three hours with Clinton for CIA director on this matter, uh, they were totally being lied to about these projects. And, in fact, we're being shoved outside the loop of these kind of super-secret operations. We've learned that uh, Jimmy Carter and other presidents have had met the same fate. And the meetings I've had with members of the Senate Intelligence Committee and, and other people up on Capitol Hill illustrates the same pattern. Uh, and so what you find is that there is this sort of shadowy bureaucracy which is irrigated to itself the right to have this information. In the meanwhile, we're fighting a, a war of terrorism in large part because of, of the dynamics of our geopolitical problems arising from, from fossil fuels and oil needs. And we have a, a biosphere that's being tremendously strained. So our group feels that it's time for these things to be disclosed and for these technologies to begin to uh, really begin to benefit the world. So the corporation of space energy access systems uh, will be building and moving to the public these systems. And, of course, you're talking about a 4 or $5 trillion energy sector in the world. So certainly there's tremendous upside in terms of finances. 
on this. But I'll over. Hold on a second, because we do have a question from a viewer, and it kind of ties in nicely here, from Carl, who says, how will you harness your energy source? Uh, my question also would be, how would you make money off of harnessing it if it's simply available in the atmosphere? Well, the, that's a very good point. In fact, J.P. Morgan said many years ago to, to Nikola Tesla, who had discovered some of these effects, uh, that uh, he didn't want to pursue it because you couldn't put a meter on it. And, and that is essentially true. The funding for, for this, and of course the revenue would be, be from the actual devices themselves. So uh, it would be the certain amount of revenue, uh, which would be substantial from uh, the engine, as it were, or the, the uh, electromagnetic motor. But the energy itself would have no meter on it. In that sense, there would be no cost associated for a fuel source. Uh, this is a significant alteration in the global economy. We recognize this. And, and if people are listening carefully, they begin to understand why uh, this sort of information has been suppressed for, for many decades. Well, actually, it's interesting. When we talk about, when, when you talk about this shadowy sort of government bureaucracy that is hiding this information, even from presidents, um, why is this need for a cover-up? Why the need? And who is actually in charge of the shadowy government, if not the current government that's been voted into office? Now, the current the government that we vote for has very little say so over these sort of concerns, and of course this is very much along the lines of what uh, Republican uh, Dwight Eisenhower said when he said that beware the military industrial complex because it can get out of control. Now, of course, he was not anti-military, and nor are we. In fact, most of my associates are, are current or former military officers, but we're very concerned about a sort of illegal secrecy that has trumped presidential authority and also trumped the oversight of the Congress. Uh, and I think that these, the, the famous special interests, quite frankly, and you can imagine who they are in, in the energy sector and in the geopolitical area as well as international finance area. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a naivete within the media but also in the general public that just because you're the U.S. president or you're a powerful senator that you have access to this kind of information, and uh, that simply is not true. I think that this is provable, by the way. There have been many books written on the so-called black budget and black government. Uh, the people I've met with at Senate Appropriations have told me that's upwards of uh, uh, 40 to $80 billion a year back in 1994 dollars were going into uh, unacknowledged or super secret black projects over which they had no control or oversight. And I think that this is, um, aside from a constitutional issue, a very serious issue for science and technology and business because uh, you have technologies which need to be uh, uh, properly vetted and disclosed and, and, and evaluated for how they can be applied to peaceful energy generation. Uh, and I think this has now become a national security issue, as, as President Bush has rightly pointed out in his mm -hmm. State of the Union address. 